All right, we're going to talk about camshafts. You know, the camshaft is the single most important thing in the engine. I mean, it dictates where the RPM range of the motor is going to run at, like as far as pulling from the bottom end or pulling on the top end. It dictates manifold vacuum. It dictates how it's going to idle. Uh, I mean, everything about the motor is dictated by the camshaft. It's kind of like having a computer. You know, you can have the biggest, baddest computer there is. I mean, the biggest hard drive, the fastest processor and everything. But if you've got software that's not up to snuff, it makes the whole computer not up to snuff. Same thing with an engine. I mean, you can have the best of everything, the best pistons, the best rods, the best crank, biggest flowing heads. I mean, you name it, it's in there. That's fine. But if the camshaft isn't up to snuff, the whole motor's not going to be up to snuff. and That's not good. All right, let's talk about the different parts of the cam and the different types of cams there are. This right here is your typical flat tappet cam. It's what you'd find in pretty much any factory motor. The different parts of the cam are, these are the bearing journals right here. This is where it rides inside the block against the, the cam bearings pressed in the block. This right here, of course, is the distributor drive gear, and it also drives the oil pump. These right here are the lobes, and of course there's two lobes per cylinder, because I mean you have an intake valve and you have an exhaust valve, so there's two per cylinder. And of course what rides against the lobe is a lifter, and then from then up is the push rod, which activates the rocker arm, which then pushes the valve down. That's typical of all camshafts. This one right here is a roller cam. We'll get into lifters in a minute, what that means. But you can see the lobes look a lot different than the lobes of a flat tappet cam. That's just because these are more aggressive. These open the valve a lot sooner and they close it a lot faster than a typical flat ca tappet cam. This is the same thing right here. It's also a roller cam, but it's a solid roller cam. Um, it's made out of a little bit different material. And you can see this right here, the, di the diameter between this area right here compared to this cam right here is a lot smaller. It's because this cam right here is designed for strokers, uh, such as like a Chevy 383, where the crankshaft stroke is increased the connecting rods come very close to the camshaft. In fact, so close they'll actually touch a couple of the lobes on the camshaft. So the way we get around that, there's two ways. You can either grind the bolt face of the connecting rod, or you can simply go with a smaller diameter camshaft. And that's what, what we choose to do here. Rather than grind on a perfectly good rod, we'd rather just use a little smaller diameter camshaft. This right here is another solid roller camshaft. This is a billet camshaft. You can see it's got a different color. It's made out of one solid ingot of billet. Um, these right here require special attention. Uh, again, it's got the same parts as anything else, but if you look how big these lobes are compared to these right here, this is a very aggressive camshaft. Uh, this is, you know, for, for big lifts, like this right here is probably a 700 inch lift cam, which means it lifts the valve off the seat almost three quarters of an inch, 700 thousandths. Where a typical stock cam lifts at about 320 thousandths. Um, a high performance cam might lift it a half inch off the valve seat. That's a 500 lift cam. Well, this one here being 700, it almost takes the valve three quarters of an inch off the valve seat. That's a long way. The thing you need to remember about billet camshafts is mainly the distributor gear right here, uh, the distributor drive. Most cams just use a, an iron gear or a steel gear. These are your typical gears that would normally come with or go with any other type of camshaft. Um, they ride against here. Like I say, they drive the oil pump and they drive the distributor. Um, nothing fancy about these. Chevrolets are a lot bigger than a Ford, as you can see the size right here. Okay, but a billet cam you have to be careful with. They run a bronze gear. And the reason you run a bronze gear, if you run an iron gear on one of these or a steel gear, it'll just eat the, the, uh, the teeth up on the drive, on the, on the cam drive. And what you'll end up with is something that looks like this. And that's not good. Uh, once that happens, it's, it's catastrophe. I mean, all the metal from here has just gone down to the rest of the motor. This is typical when you don't change distributor gears or you use an old worn out gear on a new camshaft, uh, anything like that, you're gonna lose this gear. So on billet cams, you wanna go ahead and use a bronze gear. Uh, if you don't match those, even with a flat tappet cam, uh, if you put a steel gear on a flat tappet cam where it's supposed to have an iron gear, the same thing will happen. So you have to be careful with that stuff. All right, while we're on a subject of distributor gears and cam gears, let me show you a little something here. These are two uh, typical gears. This one's of a small block Chevy, and this one's of a small block Ford. A lot of you probably know to run high volume oil pumps in performance motors, and that's fine and dandy on most Chevrolets. Um, on Fords though, it's something that you might want to think twice about. What drives the oil pump is the distributor gear. Um, and as you can see on the Chevrolet gear right here, this one, the teeth are a lot larger than the Ford gear. This is the Ford gear. Um, this, this gear being that it's bigger takes a bigger load. The Ford gears, what's real common to happen is with high volume oil pumps, it just wipes the teeth off, especially if you're running a thicker oil, uh, like a straight 30 weight or a straight 40 weight or something like that. Um, even in situations where you're not doing that, it's not uncommon uh, to wipe the teeth off of a Ford distributor gear just because the load of the oil pump is so great. So you want to watch that kind of stuff. 
Um, another thing is when you're running bronze gears, there is a drawback to running bronze gears. This stuff is soft. It doesn't last very long. So if you're going to run a, a solid roller cam on the street and you're going to run a bronze distributor gear, you got to check it every now and then because these are soft. They will wear out. Now some manufacturers have taken it upon themselves to use a different type of material on the, in, on the cam gear right here. Some are usable with a steel gear, just like what a factory roller car would come with, like a late model Chevrolet or a late model Ford. They have a factory roller cam in them, and they use a steel distributor gear. Some cams are compatible with steel gears. So when you're selecting camshafts and going to make a purchase, you might want to check into that first so you don't end up with the, uh, the dilemma of checking the bronze gear all the time. All right, what I have here is a fuel pump push rod. You know, normally this wouldn't be an issue, but on roller cams, you want to be sure you use the correct push rod. This one right here has a bronze tip on it. And just like having to use a bronze distributor gear on a billet roller camshaft, you need to use a, a push rod like this that has a bronze tip. With a